you know something else that we need to get rid of as king is unnecessary Latin. Welcome to If I Were King, the podcast where two friends somewhere on earth talk about the new world order and other things, including, but not limited to, the lizard people. Let's just jump into it. You have a 10 out of 10 idea that, uh, tell, tell me, tell me if you were king, what would you do? If I were king, I would make even more unnecessary acronyms. Uh, unnecessary acronyms absolutely plague our society. It's uh, become, frankly, out of control. And then, since I'm now doing some education and uh, going into the hospital environment uh, in, in medicine and uh, experiencing the, the even greater world of acronyms, I have to think about these things. So. Uh, one of the acronyms that I'd like to go over, first of all, is is uh, unnecessary acronyms in and of itself, UAs for short. Why increase them then eliminate them? Why increase them rather than eliminate, uh, frankly, is to be uh, a smartass because uh, who doesn't love a good satire? And we, we need to satire these acronyms by creating even more unnecessary acronyms uh, to just really complicate things and make it even more of an uh, unwelcoming situation in terms of language. Well, can you tell me a little bit about, t so, so bring, bring it down to earth for me. How, where did you, for, tell me a little bit about how this works in your day-to-day -day life right now. Yeah, basically uh, I use a bunch of acronyms to quickly communicate things uh, that only a certain percentage of people would have any idea what I mean by. And they use do the same to me. What happens though is many times they use these acronyms that almost nobody understands, uh, which is essentially the reason for uh, the the the, sat the satire being necessary, uh, because they'll use ones like LWK, which when you Google it is large white kidney, which is an absolutely pointless. An absolutely pointless acronym. That's what it is. <laughs> Tell me more about what actually is an LWK. What is it? That's an issue for Google to answer, man. Because it's, I don't know, your kidney can turn large and white if you have some kind of problem. Uh, here's what Google's saying. Okay, this isn't like a white people problem. That's what you're saying? Right, it's a, a general issue causing... A, large and white so it's a plague on humanity is what you're saying essentially yeah does, does it affect one kidney or both kidneys this is a good question uh, it's called bright's disease can you have one large white kidney and one regular kidney probably almost certainly <laughs> <laughs> it's called bright's disease lupus nephritis uh, autoimmune response during a lupus flare. So it's people with lupus, apparently. Yeah, but their kidney gets large and white. You mean like werewolves? More or less. More or less. So, so basically people who are werewolf can get uh, white liver disease or what, what, what was it? Yeah, large white kidney. Large white yeah. kidney. So if you ever hunt a werewolf for meat, be sure to check the kidneys. They may be large and white, in which case you don't want to eat that shit. Leave that part alone. You can eat the rest, though. Well, I, 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 like, I like this a lot. I mean, I know you're, what do you, what do you call it, med school? Are you in med school or doctor school? You're in, you're in smart people school. Tell, tell, me, tell me more about that, because um, I, think, I think this comes from your personal experience. Yeah, it comes from personal experience. This love for acronyms and that the world needs more of them. Yes, it needs more. There are just not enough, which is why I've taken the liberty of making some more unnecessary medical acronyms uh, to complicate things further and, and to add flavor. Tell, tell me about what kind of flavor do we need in the workplace? <laughs> just uh, uh, that, that when somebody says one of these things, you get this uh, very confused look on your face and think, what the hell did they just say? Or you read it. And uh, you try to Google it, but these aren't on Google because uh, the, technically they, they do not exist, except in my own imagination. You mean like in a closed so... <laughs> professional work environment when you get a professional email and you're like, what the fuck is that? 
Yeah. And you kind of go, is this an inside joke? It is. <laughs> okay, I like this. So I, I have beef with, um, when I read the news, and they ever, whenever they talk about the World Health Organization, a.k.a. the WHO, that's how I read it, the WHO. That's how I say it, the WHO. Um, but when I hear some people like uh, like on a newscast or, or a podcast or whatever, but they say who, infuriates me, Paul. Infuriates me. I think, I think we need to get rid of acronyms because when people, because it is, it is demeaning to the World Health Organization. This is the World Health Organization. This is an immensely important issue. But when people call it just who, who cares? I think, I think the acronym, I think you make a good point where you're saying some of them are unnecessary acronyms. And um, the World Health Organization should be the WHO at minimum, not who. Um, what do you think? What do you think, Paul? Well, I think you're goddamn right, Norm. <laughs> I don't know. Some uh, acronyms, yeah, there's just some where it's like, just say it, man. Just say it. <laughs> don't don't make an acronym for it. The World Health Organization. Or use it very sparingly. We could almost just create a system of rules for how you can use them. Say World Health Organization the first time. Put some parentheses, WHO, except that's a universal rule. And from there on out in an article, you can call it the WHO or however you want to do. But you can't just start spouting off acronyms without explanation and expecting everybody to understand what the hell you're talking about. Sometimes there's just way too much. Well, I think that's good news for you, Paul, since like if you were king, I don't think you need to uh, impose that... Uh... Uh, say it once and then put in acronyms because that's already standard press standard in um, everywhere. So I think you're saying the world is already on the right track. My specific issue is they're just saying the word who. That is that is wrong. It is a WHO. That is my specific, specific thing. You can't use a real word. You can't use an acronym for a real word if that word already exists. Okay? That's what I'm saying. NASA, not a real word. Definitely can say NASA. Can't say who. You have to see the WHO. Also, who's the who? There's like a band or something. The who? There is the know? band. The who? <laughs> <laughs> so, you can't say the who because then you're talking about a British band as well. And that wouldn't, that wouldn't work. Yeah. I, I'm generally against acronyms, but there's one acronym I do like, Paul, which is um, TFL. That is my favorite, that is my favorite acronym. Can you, can you explain for the people what TFL is? Because uh, you're more qualified than me. Uh, well, I don't know. You got, you got a bigger degree in this than me. Me? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, kinesiology. Yeah, <laughs> a diploma. Diploma. Tenshi Basha Latte. All right. It's, um, I, I, love, I love the word and the acronym, TFL and Tenshi Basha Latte. Uh, or Lata. Good. Super, super good uh, deg- uh, diploma over here. But, you know... Every time I think of TFL, I grab my TFL. <laughs> I don't know. Is, if that, is that weird, Paul? Uh, you may be... Uh, you may have some kind of disorder. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily. One, one of many? Yeah, we'd have to rule <laughs> it out. So, But yeah, yeah, the TFL, it's there on the side of your leg. The side, yeah, right? Yeah, it's on the side of your leg. And it's near some other stuff, some muscles and crap. But yeah, TFL, uh, you know something else that we need to get rid of as king is unnecessary Latin. Actually, U, so UL's for short, yeah. Uh, so unnecessary Latin ah, yeah, things because tensor fascia lata has almost no meaning to anybody in the modern world except for doctors and you know other people but you could call it that uh the thing on the side of your leg (laughs) you might want to be more specific than that but it is actually a thing so uh i'm gonna divulge some of the acronyms uh, that i've created to satire uh Medical acronyms. Oh, satire. Okay. Can we use these in real life for realsies? Like, uh, would you impose this on on the people when when you were in, when you're in power? Well, 
if I put it in a medical history, let's put it this way, I'd probably get in trouble. <laughs> or they just wouldn't understand me, which would contribute greatly to the satire because they would not understand. So starting with one of these in neurodiagnostics, when you have these wires on your head uh, to look at your brain waves, one of them that appears is called the posterior dominant rhythm. It's posterior because it's in the back of your head. It's dominant because I don't know why it's dominant, but it is. And it's a rhythm because it's rhythmic. But you refer to it constantly as the PDR, uh, for which reason I created what I call the RZR, uh, which is the resting Zen rhythm. You see the PDR appears when you close your eyes. Don't, don't, what is the resting Zen rhythm? It's just a, another word really for the PDR because it appears when you close your eyes and are a bit relaxed. So the RZR, the resting Zen rhythm, is what appears when you close your eyes. It's a bit more... Ah, uh, so sleep? No, not quite. Before sleep, ah, during consciousness. Relaxing. Resting Zen rhythm. I like it. I'm going to just start saying that in public now. I'll be like, I'm just going to get some RZR right now. They're like, you mean, you mean, you mean you're mean, you going to get some Zs? No, no, no. I'm going to get some RZRs. Just close your eyes. That's it. You got an RZ. Well, actually, some people don't, but most people do. It's like 90% of everybody does. I would say that if I was, you know, hanging out with you, but if I was, you know, here and talking to other people, I'd call them RZRs because that's how we do. In Canada. Yeah, and the rest of the fucking world, too. <laughs> you call it Z in Canada? No. All of Canada? Yeah, man. I mean, people will say Z. They're fucking Americanized. They're wrong. But... Yeah. Wrong. So, uh, Norman, do you know what what kind of conversation we're having right now? And the acronym? Because we're uh, what, oh, what kind of uh, acronym? What kind of conversation are we having right now? A right. professional uh, conversation between two um, handsome fellows? Well, what we're having, Norman, is that too, but uh, principally a SDC, a stereotypical dude conversation. <laughs> and <laughs> this consists primarily of having a, uh, uh, a, a conversation, a utilitarian conversation with flat out effect. <laughs> An SDC. <laughs> I find ST, uh, SDCs to be um, very relaxing, very, uh, very food for the soul, really. Yes. That is what is ironic about them, is that they're utilitarian in the sense that they're emotionally calming. You're emotionally calming right now. <laughs> I'm very at peace speaking to you. So this, this is an SDC, as, you, as you're suggesting we should call this. That's right. That's right. And uh, just some more food for thought, just something I created for fun the other day. My friend, uh, she was having, well, she was sick, and she was having some cough spasms, from what she told me, after she laughed. And in epilepsy, you can have gelastic seizures, which is where you have a seizure that causes you to laugh. And... Uh, it's a non -ep well, you can have non-epileptic uh, abnormalities too. So they use a lot of these words, non-epileptic and non-epileptiform and things like that, big words. And they also use words like uh, gelastogenic, which is the creation of laughter. So I created this uh, acronym, gelastogenic, non-epileptic or non-epileptiform cough spasms of the Rachel, my friend being Rachel. And you call them Neskers, and that it only applies to Rachel. And you can only really use it to talk about <laughs> this very specific <laughs> non-abnormal-in-the-brain uh, non activity that she was experiencing. What, what exactly is non-abnormal? Non so a regular, typical, is what you're saying. Typical of a cough. Wait, so are you saying that we, some, what goes on in our brain when we cough? I have no idea. <laughs> no, I kind of do. Your nerves do stuff to the muscles in your throat. And they do stuff. I, tr I trust you 100% <laughs> of the future of my health. <laughs> I'm glad, sir. I'm glad.
Luckily, I don't have to diagnose coughs. <laughs> can can any doctor diagnose a cough? Paul, just, do people diagnose coughs? What comes first, the diagnosis <laughs> or the cough, Paul? Uh, generally the cough, but yeah. <laughs> Sometimes doctors diagnose shit before it exists. They call that hypochondriasis. <laughs> Is there an acronym for that? I don't know. I don't think so, because it's one word. H. <laughs> H. <laughs> exactly. What do you What do you call it? I mean, those are hypochondriacs, right? People, people are super. Uh, what do you call it? Hyper aware, I guess, of healthy things. Well, they're or not hyper aware. Of of, yeah, they're hyper aware of sickness. They think they're sick all the time, and that something's wrong mm-hmm. with them. I think I'm sick all the time, but like with two C's and a bad father. No, I'm kidding. The... <laughs> <laughs> so, Norman, we also came up with an idea for a section about guessing the origins of words. And the one that I want to present to you, and then we'll go over the real origin of it, is Nimrod. Nimrod. <clears throat> a word I don't yes. ever use. Okay, um, so first of all, I gotta, I'm going to try and tell you what I think Nimrod means. I think it means like, you know, dumb, stupid, idiot. Uh, that's my guess of what it means. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, all right. All right, and where, and now the origin of this, Nimrod. All right. N- okay, it's a rod, like a fishing rod. All right, so stupid people, fishing rod, uh, and nim, uh, sounds like dim, uh, so uh, dim as in not so bright, as in not smart. Okay, um. <laughs> so you have dim and fishing rod. <laughs> that is my, I think. All right, so it's it's when people fished, back in the day. Um, I'm guessing this is like an Anglo word, like from the UK back in the day, because it sounds super duper Anglo, uh, Nimrod. Um, I'm going to guess it's because you shouldn't really fish when it's dark because that's dangerous. And when people, they're like, yeah, that guy's a Dimrod, but that eventually just happened to be Nimrod. And that's what they called stupid people because they were people who were likely to go fishing at night. (laughs) That is the origin of of, of Nimrod. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> is is that close to what you oh. thought it was? Uh, what did you think? Because I, I think you know the answer, but what did you think before you knew the answer? I kind of thought it was maybe like a rock terminology, like a rock origin, some kind of rock and roll. Oh, okay. Tell me why. It just has a very metal sound to it. Nimrod. <laughs> Nimrod. <laughs> oh, like a rock, like a... Like a rod you would put in the ground for something? Yeah, or you could be like a lightning rod. So you have lightning rods, you have fishing rods. Or it could be like a lightning rod for nimwits. <laughs> and they are attracted to it. That could be one explanation. So so why why is this word coming up right now? Why why the word rim, nimrod? How did this uh, how did this come into your life? Why why now? It literally it just popped into my head. Right here, right now. No, no, no. Like, uh, I, I ch- genuinely don't remember when it happened. <laughs> but it did. But so why, why did you feel like you needed to know the origin of this? Because it sounded so obscure and bizarre that uh, I couldn't imagine what the actual origin must be. So I googled it and I found out. Okay, all right. Tell me. So I first want to start with like a real I- example of how it could be used in a sentence. Oh, oh, you mean his- the historical use. Okay, okay, okay. So let's, maybe you'll be able to guess once I tell you this. Okay. Uh, so the sentence is, Nimrods take to the field after everything from prairie dogs to grizzly bears. Nimrods take to the field like prairie dogs and Disney bears. Is it an animal? No. What, Nimrods take so like oh, Nimrods take to the field like after like, uh, after everything oh, from is prairie it, dogs to grizzly bears. Is it like a bug? Like a, <laughs> no. like a like like a pest? 
No. <laughs> Man, I, like, this is. Can can you use it in another sentence? <laughs> Nimrods were really good at killing mastodons. Oh, oh, like Neanderthals. <laughs> Not quite, but it's a little more specific. But it's it means it. Well, it was a it was a Hebrew character who was a skillful hunter. And so it's his name. A Hebrew, a Hebrew character who was a skillful hunter. Yeah, skillful and some hunter. kind of story or something. So, so a Jewish hunter is what you're saying? Yeah, kind of. And now we call those people stupid. Well, yes. <laughs> I don't know how it happened. It took a very dark, it took a very dark turn. A very dark turn. I don't know how it came about. I'm not going into the... <laughs> historical etymology of it but <laughs> I, th I think you needed to go a little bit deeper once you figured this out man <laughs> so was this a word actually used in the, the, this what sources were you using like when when you read that prairie dog whatever example w was that an american source was that an english source what was that that was oxford dictionary oh oxford dictionary yeah interesting and what year was that? Uh, is that current? Is that what, what year? Is that, yeah. Like, is that is that what it's? If I Google that right now in Oxford, will I find that? Let's see. Oh, I'm gonna do that right now. Nimrod etymology, late 16th century, the name of the great grandson of Noah, known for his skill as a hunter. There you go. Oh, so it's like a Christiany Jewish thing. Kind of. Noah was yeah. I see. This is weird. No, Nimrod, literally, literally, comma, quote, we will rebel or let us rebel in Hebrew. Huh. Oh, shit. Here's the thing that might go into... Well, it says Nimrod because people started using it ironically to mean a hunter oh. who is maybe not so great. Ah. So he was actually a good hunter, but people started making making fun of bad hunters using uh, his name when people it's probably I, I so i guess that's when people started hunting less often when cities were becoming more of a thing and and when rich rich buddy guy wanted to go out and um hunt but he wasn't good or like you know some king or royal or whatever would go out and they would go be with his like whatever his hunting posse and be like yeah he's a rim he's a real nimrod okay all yeah. right i see this i see how this all right, okay, okay, okay. He's okay, that guy okay, in okay. the hunting party who no one else likes. Okay. <laughs> I... <laughs> and that just became general dumbness over the yeah. time. All right, cool. I mean, it's not like that we really use this word. It's, it is a dated word. Like, I don't know, your parents are suit. You have an all-American family, Paul, right? I guess uh, so. <laughs> yeah. Right? Generations back, yeah? Um. So you think, would your parents use the word Nimrod? Yes, absolutely. They would, okay. Are your parents older or are they younger? Older. Okay, like like 60 plus? Yes, approximately 60. Okay, 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 all right. So have you heard them ever say that? Is that kind of a thing they said when you were growing up? Like Absolutely. Interesting. They may not say it as much up in Canada. I don't know. I, I don't know. My parents aren't fucking Canadian. I don't fucking know. That's true. But... <laughs> That was that was fun, Paul. Yeah, that was fun. I like I like this. Uh, a lot of twists and turns. Yeah, there were more than I thought there'd be. <laughs> so what I'd like to do is go from hunting and gathering to um, Wi-Fi, because if I were king, Paul, excellent segue. There would be no more hipster cafes with no Wi-Fi. That's a hipster trend, and it must be punished. If you don't want to be connected to Wi-Fi then don't be connected. <laughs> Turn off your phone. Go fucking camping. <laughs> or learn to have a healthy conversation. <laughs> but keep the Wi-Fi in the cafes. So tell me, Norman, why did this come up? Or what? What freaking cafe? <laughs> okay, well, you know, I never thought this was a problem until uh, I have, uh, over the years, I've had a couple of cafes that I called HQ. So right now I have a cafe that I often go to work at, uh, you know, doing video editing, photo editing, that I just go to work because I don't like working at home. It's not a good work environment. So I go there. I call it HQ2 because it is, it is the 
second headquarters that I've used. But on occasion, I try to uh, mix it up, you know, uh, be like, yeah, you know what, maybe I'm going to go to a different street, a little bit closer to home or something. And when I tried doing this last, I went to Commercial Drive um, in Vancouver. Very, uh, it's, 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 it's not, uh, you know, it's got, uh, it's got restaurants, it's got some hipsters, it's got some bars, it's a good little mix of everything. But they had this one cafe, it had big windows, kind of nice location, uh, you know, super uh, typical hipster kind of joint where like, you know, the guy's wearing like, uh, like a beanie and making your coffee for you. Who, and you, you're like, oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> but then they make you the best coffee of your life and you're like, well, I'll come back here. So I did come back there one time. I was like, great, I'm going to do some work here for whatever. And I get my coffee. I sit down, open my laptop. I'm like, okay, I need to connect to the internet just to get some files from Google Drive. And then when I tried doing that, I was like, oh, where's the Wi-Fi password? Do, do, do. And I go up, I ask them, hey, what's your Wi-Fi password? And I said, oh, we don't do that here. I wasn't impressed, Paul. I wasn't impressed. I, uh, <laughs> I left immediately. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back right after this. And we're back. What was I saying, Paul? Well, you'd finished talking about the hipster cafes. I think you'd finished... Ah, uh, yes, no, I'm, I'm talking about the hipster cafes, Paul, and I don't like them. They need to go. Every owner, the hip, specific, I don't really give a shit about hipster cafes. I go to them because I don't really have a choice, all right? They, they're everywhere, all right? <laughs> they're everywhere, Paul. I don't know, I don't know, in, um, in, in, uh, fuck, I always forget what state you're in, Arizona, New Mexico, New Mexico, right? Yeah. All right, right, and in Albuquerque? Yeah. More or less. <laughs> is there a bunch of hipster cafes in Albuquerque? There's a bunch of hipster cafes everywhere. Would, would you? Is Albuquerque very hipster? I don't know if you'd call it hipster. No, not really. Okay. okay. I'm just, just curious. I would say Vancouver is very hipster. I would say. Um, <laughs> anyways, my point is you can't, es- you can't escape hipster cafes, Paul. You can't. They're everywhere. Um, but what, what I don't go to a hipster cafe for is... I don't go there to escape the internet, all right? The internet, I need so I can work, all right? Cafes, that's what they are now. That's what cafes have always been, a place to hang out, all right? You know, um, Engels and, and Marx hung out at cafes, all right? They didn't go there, have their coffee, and leave, okay? The Engels and the Marx, yeah. <laughs> all right? This is true. You know, historically, it's a, it's a meeting place for people to not only exchange ideas, chill, but also work on your manifestos, for example. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've heard that uh, that's where King Arthur and the, the round, Knights of the Round Table would go, was to cafes. People have been using cafes for hundreds of years as meeting places, and it would be inappropriate for them to not have internet. So, if I were King Paul, I would send them to Arctic work camps. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put them in jail. I'd put them to work, you know? <laughs> No wasted labor under my regime, okay? The uh, the cafe owners. The Arctic needs development. The, the 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 world is warming, Paul. And those farms, to take advantage of that changing climate, Paul, won't build themselves. So anyways, every hipster cafe owner who has a cafe without um, internet, Wi-Fi, s- straight, straight to the work camp. <laughs> yeah. What about uh, cafe employees who are pro-internet? internetlessness inter yeah, yeah well i see i'm just saying that you can you can, if if you're not d- disciplined enough to have to to just like put your phone on silent or to, you know ignore your phone maybe you shouldn't have a phone you what <laughs> paul you know if you can't if you can't if you maybe maybe you need to self discipline yourself um because even if you don't have internet and if if you're like, oh, well, I just want to be off my phone. There's data, man. You just use your data. That's what people do. <laughs> They're like, oh, I don't have Wi-Fi here or I can't connect to it because of a password. They just use their data. So I think it's redundant to not having it. So people want to go to a place where they can get shit done, you know, get their work done. So they'll buy their coffee. Oh, they get hungry. They buy fucking some snacks as well, and maybe they buy another coffee because they're like, well, shit, this work's taking longer than I want to. Okay? Yeah. So what I was saying is I primarily go to work cafes for work, you know, to get shit done. I also go to cafes to hang out with friends sometimes because I'm like, hey, man, let's fucking catch up. Um, so, yeah, cafes, that's their role is to hang out, spend time. Um, 
some it's a little bit different than a restaurant where like yeah you go to hang out with friends at restaurants but you're expected to leave at some point if you're yeah. not eating you know at a bar it's different because you're drinking and if you're at a bar you're probably getting multiple rounds of drinks you know especially like when it's busy you're like okay are you guys done great here's the bill but yeah it it, it really bothered me um not having wi-fi at uh, at a cafe so i at, in uni when i was studying um i went to this uh, cafe all the time with my friend we call it hq the original og hq the og hq <laughs> uh, <laughs> um but it was it was called uh oh fuck i don't even remember what it was called it was called it hq i think it was called aperture and uh yeah we would go then we'd study all the time if not just hang out the two primary uses of cafe uh but they did some renovations after during COVID, i guess they they shut down uh when i went back to school and i was like great i'm gonna i needed to do uh it was a separate podcast actually for uh, when i was in j school right um so we went there to edit it and do the final touches together put it all together and we got there and they got rid of their internet dude they're spreading they turned into <laughs> a hipster cafe without internet wi-fi i was fu- i was i was furious because first of all, I was like, well, I like this cafe. I like the vibes. Very cozy, cash vibes. They had like a front area and a back area. The back area sometimes hosted really weird groups who uh, would read books about manifesting your, your destiny <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. You know, like you got to gotta manifest your success. Uh <laughs> There was so it was it was it was a it was a good it was a good cafe and I was really very disappointed that well I can't take I can't make use of it anymore because mm. it wasn't a cafe that was like convenient for me I went out of the way to go there like I had to take a bus it wasn't near like the, the near the metro or anything like that like if I wanted to go there I had to take like two buses or or you know take take the train and walk for like forty minutes uh, half an hour whatever it took. Um, so this is what I'm saying, Paul. The Wi-Fi, build it, and they will come, Paul. That's right. Well, and I imagine you must have walked in there, figured out there was no Wi-Fi anymore, and been like, "No, no, no, Paul. We we set up. You know, you buy your drinks, you set up, you open everything, because you know you have files on your computer, and you start doing it. And this was like, you know, multiple people were involved, so we needed to, you know, Google Doc it up, share some documents, et cetera, et cetera, give it to them for feedback and stuff like that. And we couldn't do that. You know, well, what we ended up doing is just draining uh, the data because, you know, you know, when you share data off your phone, it uses it twice because your phone uses it. And then if you say use it on your computer, it uses it a second time. Mm. So um, that'll, uh, you know, unless, unless you have unlimited data, then, you know, you're a fucking baller and you have no real problems. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm kind of sad, Norman, because I thought that your response on getting to the HQ, the OG HQ, and finding there was no mm. longer Wi-Fi there, would have been to stand up, walk up to the owner, and say, straight to the gulag with you. <laughs> the owner's never there, man. They, they, it's just employees, you know. I, I as, as you may or may not have known, Paul, uh, worked in uh, the restaurant industry for, uh, let's say, six months short of a decade. Um, and... Uh, I don't go up to uh, service employees and give them shit because I know, number one, they don't fucking care. Number two, they can't do anything about it. <laughs> they just get paid to be there. Yes. <laughs> but the owner... You know, I might say something politely and be like, oh, hey, like, is it just out or an, or is it just gone? <laughs> <laughs> but in my, to, my, to my dismay, it was gone. Um, but anyways, Paul, next time you're in Vancouver, uh, we'll go there because they serve beer now. So that's interesting. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. Yeah, they're taking, cause it's on main street, which is, you know, I would say one of the hipster centers of Vancouver and, you know, a cafe that has beer, very hipster. Um, that's a brew That's how, that's how that, it's a, a, <laughs> it's a brew A brew Yeah. It's like, it's like cafe. I was going to say a cafeteria. Cafeteria. <laughs> a brufeteria. A, a cerveza. A, a brufeteria. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. Anyways. Um, yeah. I think um, 
cafe owners have no excuse to to haul up the 100 or whatever bucks a month to uh, have Wi-Fi in their establishments or off to the Arctic work camps. Um, I don't call them gulags because um, we're not in Siberia uh, over here. But uh, but you know what? But you know what? I am. I would be king of the world. So yeah, fuck them. I'll throw them right into Siberia. They're going straight to the gulag. Uh, <laughs> Siberia. <laughs> They're like that's far as I'm not. Shit. I'm not putting them on a plane. I'm putting them on a. I'm putting them on a fucking on a ship. It's gonna be. It's gonna be long, and grueling journey. Okay, to the Arctic. All right, and they're <laughs> to and the Arctic. yeah. It's not. It's 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 not just the. It's it's not the destination that bad. That's bad. It's not great, but the journey is gonna be not good. Frostbite is a minimum guarantee. Anyways, my take, my take is that um, you know, Fire King, it would be my decree, Paul. To make it to make Wi-Fi universally accessible at all cafes, because some people they don't have a safe, healthy, sat or satisfactory workplace to work or study or whatever, hang out at home, you know, due to whatever amount of reasons, and and that's why cafes need to fill fill that niche so that people can work, hang out, chill, have a have a have a nice place to do their things, and Wi-Fi in this day and age in 2022. And into the future, uh, you know, it's kind of a right to be a, to have access to the internet. And I think anybody who complains about people going to the gulag because of that hipster shit, um, you know, they, they can get censored too. <laughs> <laughs> Straight to the gulag with them as well. <laughs> so, Paul, tell me about this music you were telling me about the other day. What is it? Who is it? What does it yes, make you feel? Norman, you're mentioning our cultural corner where we. Discuss culture and corners. Uh, today we're going to be discussing a Canadian song. Oh, the so you mean Quebecois. we got a Quebecois? Quebecois. She's. I, a, I, I yeah. will have to. I will have to bleep out this French. Uh, they'll get angry. Oh, she's Quebecois <laughs> with the was because she's female. With, with the was yeah. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> How would they pronounce that differently from the French? You have Quebecois, and then what did they say? I don't fucking know. Mean... Ah. <laughs> one's annoying and the other's pretentious, all right? So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, tell me about it. What is it? What's, who's the person? Yes, her talking? name is Ingrid St. Pierre, or in. Very, very Quebecois. Right? Very. And, or in my. I, I know St. Pierre's. Oh, really? Interesting. Or in my attempt at the pronunciation, Angri de Saint Pierre, Saint Pierre, Pierre, yeah. Very nice. More Very or less. Nice. Uh, yeah. Nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. Thank you. Maybe a ten out of ten. You have an excellent, uh, you have an excellent knack for uh, picking up accents, uh, like your Andalou. Um... Le Andalouse. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, tell me a little bit about, more about Angri. What song? Why? Why Angry? Why? I really don't know much about the lady, but she's blonde, and f- Quebecois, and she made a song called Les Aéronef. Les a- yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna leave it at that. The flying machines. Uh, really, it just means planes. Uh, oh. I don't know about flying machines, but they've done some uh, creative translation here. It's a song about. It does not sound at all like what it's about. So the point of this cultural corner is to share with you guys who don't speak other foreign languages uh, the meaning of things that... Very, very condescending, Paul. Very condescending. I'm going to keep that in. <laughs> Those of you not cool enough. <laughs> Here, 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 here. Let me, let me, let the media man take over for a second. Culture Corner is where we share our experiences with um, other cultures outside of North America and share it with you. Interesting takes, thoughts, and ideas. Um, so Paul has some music he wants to share. That's uh, by a Quebecois art- artist called Ingrid Henri Saint Pierre, <laughs> and the song is Les Erronef. Um Tell me about Les Erronef. How did how did you hear about this in the first place? Is this something you went out looking? Do you know about Saint Pierre? T- tell me about how how you you know how you how you ended up you know listening to Angri. I think I just was on Spotify listening to some French music, 
and it was one of the recommendations, and it stuck with me. Okay, okay. Is your is your Spotify recommendations uh, quite uh, multilingual, Paul? Is that is that is that a thing, or is that was this a random out of the blue uh, francophone song? Like ninety percent of my recommendations are in Spanish, and then probably like not ninety percent, like eighty percent, say, and then like ten percent probably in English, and then seven percent in Portuguese, and like three percent in French, probably. I don't know, something like that. Okay, interesting. All right, all right. So for context, you're a man who listens to a lot of uh, uh, the the language group of Latin. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so tell me, tell me about uh, Les Erones, all right? Yes, yeah, so it's a song about an older lady. Is it an older? I don't know if she's older. She's probably older. Yes, she is older. That's... How do we know she's an older lady if it's a song? Because she's La Vielle Dame. She's the older oh, lady, yes. yes. Okay, I like it, I like it. All right, tell me more about her. Uh, she's a smoker, and basically the song goes that she's up on her ebony balky, balcony, uh, smoking. La nuit tombée, la vieille dame du cinquième crée des cigarettes and à son balcon d'ébène. Her balcony can barely uh, stand the weight of her because she has such profound agoraphobia that she's always outside smoking on the balcony. And from up there, she uses binoculars to spy on couples across the way. And uh, in this case, she spies on a couple who's fighting, not doing so well. And uh, she actually decides to leave notes, love notes around town where she knows that they'll, fi they'll both find them uh, for them to meet up and reunite and uh, like each other again. And she spies on them and watches them having a good time together. Not a good time. <laughs> that makes it sound like she spied on. She didn't spy on a very in intimate scene from at least what the song details. She just saw them being happy together again. Uh, so no spicy, no spicy spying. Just regular spying. Yeah. Nosing around. Pretty much. She's just watching. So, uh, what what speaks to you? What speaks to you about this song, Paul? Why do you like it so much? Why is it worth talking about right now? Uh, I liked it because it sounds nice, and it's also interesting once you know the actual meaning of the song and the lyrics, because she's Quebecoise, and so even if you speak French, you may as well not. And <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> you understand part of what she's saying, but I also am not a native French speaker, so I, I really didn't understand what she was saying. And then I looked at the English translation, and uh, it turns out to be this, this story that I totally did not expect. So I thought it might be interesting to share with people who don't speak other languages, because then they can be exposed to something that they would never have been exposed to. Why, uh, have you have you been listening to the song a lot in particular? Uh, I've listened to it since like two years ago, but not all the time or anything. Yeah. Okay, it's in the, it's in the loop. Back. Well, in my corner, this relates to, um, this relates to my cafe point from earlier in a, in a different roundabout way. Uh, so, like, you know, we in North America, you know, Canada, specifically what I'm talking about is, um, I think we should adopt, or I believe we should adopt um, the Spanish mannerism or, like, cultural quirk of uh, not th taking things to go. You know, that might be coffee, food, etc. You know, you know, um, you know, a little bit of background to this. As you know, Paul, <laughs> you, you, may, you might know that I lived in Spain for almost a year. Uh, it's like we met there or something for the first time. Um, and what I quickly noticed was, um, it was kind of like an unspoken rule where, you know, you sit down for your coffee or, you know, whatever breakfast you have, you know, and, um, this, I think, you know, of course ties in with like the Spanish perception of time, uh, where, you know, <laughs> or lack of the perception of time, 
you know, everyone in Spain is too cool. They don't, sh they don't show up on the party when it starts. They show up late. To give an actual example of, you know, this actual, this lack of time thing is in my first month when I got there, I had to get my, my, um, my student visa for a residential visa thing. And um, I'm, usually, I'm pretty, I'm pretty uh, on time kind of person, but I fucked up. I, I messed up the time. I was supposed to like, I thought I was supposed to meet at the school at a time, but I was actually supposed to meet at the office at a time. So whatever, say it was 9 a.m. or something and I was late. Uh, I was at the wrong place at the right time, at the wrong time. And I had to, um, and even the Spanish people, my Spanish profs were like, <laughs> man, you're late, Norman. And my Spanish people are telling you you're late. All right, you, kinda, you might be late. Uh, <laughs> so they, they, they like hush, they like usher me into a cab. They, like, they, they jump into the cab with me and we go to the, the government building and I go in there. Uh, I fumble around with my shitty, especially shitty Spanish at the time. And I, I get my ticket to get my shit, you know, to get served. And I get there and, um, you know, uh, I get to the front desk to the, to the woman at the front desk and there was no problem at all. Not, not even a, not even a glance at the watch. It was like, oh, cool, you're here. Uh, so you know what? I was probably about half an hour-ish or more late. And uh, for a very important uh, appointment to get my, uh, you know, my legal uh, status to stay longer than 90 days in the country. Um, but yeah, I stumbled through bureaucracy and it was not a problem. So that, that is what I'm kind of talking about, wrapping it all back to my point to actually believe, you know, I believe that we should sit down and take the time for a morning coffee. Or toast, or whatever, to whatever suits your fancy. Because I think it does amazing things for the soul, Paul. Um, you know, it lets your body, you know, you chill, slows down the mind a little bit. You, a, just like a designated time, a ritual almost, just to slow down, but also get ready for like a busy day. You're mentally ready, and um, I think it's a great way. Even you know, you ch in Spain is quite. It's quite odd to go to a restaurant or a cafe by yourself. Uh, I did it. I didn't really care um, because I'm a, I'm a rebel, Paul. I'm a, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, a Nimrod. Uh, <laughs> a Nimrod. <laughs> so I think, I think it's a great way to, uh, you know, chat with a friend or a stranger for five to ten minutes and then be really ready for your day because I think in this day and age, especially for me, I, when I work in the morning, I <laughs> don't give myself any time. I give myself the minimum required time for the maximum amount of sleep. <laughs> That's like when right. I worked in restaurants and I had to open at 7 a.m., I woke up 15 minutes before my shift, Paul. That was in bed and I had to be in the door in 15 minutes, uh, which I did, which I did. Um, not, not a pleasant way to wake up, like, you know, five days a week. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, what do you think, Paul? Do the Spaniards have it right? Or, you know, other cultures that, you know, have this, uh, this thing about not taking things to go? What do you think? I think there's a point to it in that you would never see people when one of the, I think it's one of the first things you notice in Spain, actually, when you're walking around town is that. Just, just so you know, uh, Paul and I met in Spain. Yes. When you're walking around, you notice that almost immediately that people, uh, are relaxing and that's just as an american you see relaxation and you're like oh i didn't know that existed uh, <laughs> the sad reality of not relaxing much yes and uh so i think that maybe if we if we didn't have to go we would relax more or we'd get more stressed out <laughs> it's possible that we'd just be way more stressed out but yeah i can see the possible validity of it in, in, interesting I, th I think that's a very uh, a very uh american perspective viewers paul i think having uh you know a little bit more time to relax and getting a, if you have a certain amount of time if you just need to get things done you get things done you get, and you know a lot of a lot of workplaces are like you know you need to work eight to ten hours uh regardless of what you do so i think if we if we just slow down a bit and just a, change, a little bit of change of uh, priorities versus this is more goal-oriented kind of thing. Like, hey, I need to finish this and this today. If I get it done in three hours, great, I'm going home. If it takes me eight, ten hours, great, whatever. So anyways, uh, if there's any Spaniards or, you know, other peoples who practice a slow morning ritual like this, uh, let us know what you think. Email us, Twitter, Instagram. 
And also, you know, what what would you change? Are are, are cafes with uh, without Wi-Fi a good idea? Yay or nay? Acronyms? Do we need more of them? Anything else to add, Paul? I don't know. Maybe just something for our Spanish friends. Si fueras el rey, qué cambiarías? Eso. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now you have to do it in French, but with a oh. Quebecois accent. <laughs> I don't know how to do Quebecois. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how they talk, really. I don't remember. It's been a long time. Si just, 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 say it, just say it in French, man. <laughs> si tu étais le roi. Yeah, the, le roi. Si tu étais le roi, qu'est-ce que c'est que vu qu'un... Changerie, changerie. That's good. That. This is this is great. This is great. I'm 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 really happy that everybody had to listen to that. Uh, also, we're being very uh, we're being uh, very um, misogynistic. Uh, or, or queen, uh, or queen, la reine, ruler, la... etc. Dictator. Um, we don't want to really we don't want to segregate people. You know, uh, you know, it's it's very. Um, CDC, casual dude. SDC? SD, SDC. Very SDC what we're doing right now, Paul. So we need to be more inclusive. Uh, yes. So um, listeners, friends, please um, judge us, whatever. That's fine. Email us. Um, you can email us at ifiwerekingpodcast at gmail.com. You can tweet us on Twitter on ifiwerekingpod. Or you can guess on Instagram at kingofthewordpodcast. Yes. And our website, which is... I paid too much for this domain, Paul. Um, How much? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You can visit us at our excellently named uh, website at if I were king of the dot world. That's right. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> visit it. <laughs> Enjoy it. As soon as I finish building it and publish it. <laughs> uh, should I get headphones too so that the mic isn't like reverberating into? Oh, you're already an audio engineer. That's right, man. I was born for this.